All right, so here we have Ratchet & Clank running at 250 frames per second on an RDX 4090. That is paired with a 7800X3D CPU. And that again is paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 megatrons per second CL30 memory. And I'm just using Boldzoid's uh, tuned timings. And uh, you can see we are basically hitting a cap here of 250-ish frames per second. Now, I believe this is an engine cap right we can't get more than that so what if you do want to get more than that let me just show you the settings here quickly get rid of this so currently where's that currently we're just at 1440p and i've just got an external capture card connected and we do have dlss quality enabled no frame generation and then also the graphics are just set on the high preset now one thing we can do to overcome the limit or the engine limit it's just enable frame generation now for some reason this game <laughs> every time i restart it um, and i change F, uh, fg settings i can't select the lss so we'll just use fsr3 frame generation yeah let's go ahead and apply the changes and now if we go have a look at our frame rate here now we are getting almost 400 frames per second and if we look down we should hit 500 so once again engine limit of 250 frames per second with the frame generation interpolating frames making that 500 frames per second right so what if you want even more than that all right enter lossless scaling now i know lossless scaling is not not something new but it has been updated recently to alice fg3 and with that we have 2x 3x and 4x and then we also have custom and we can select up to 20x right so i'm going to i'm not going to be doing 2x and 3x right i'm going to be just playing around this is just a, a messing around video we're going to be testing 4x because 4x would be for the new nvidia gpus right mfg is a 4x frame generation so these are just my settings i do have g-sync support draw fps i do have the dxgi capture api enabled here some games you might need to change it to wgc for it to work but most games use the dxgi perfectly fine and then also i do not have any scaling through lossless scaling i only have the frame generation option enabled here right so we'll do 4x and what we can do is we can just press Control alt and s and the screen flickers and now if you have a look in the top left hand corner we are basically going from 60 frames per second to 240 frames per second right now i can't get rid of the 60 frames per second limit for some reason i tried everything people said i needed to disable g-sync others said i to enable g-sync this is a 60 frames per second or 60 hertz capture card but v-sync is disabled so i'm not sure why that is you can see that the the frame rate in msi afterburner is doing 140 150 frames per second but i'll close msi afterburner now because i want us to just focus on the top left because the msi afterburner statistics are obviously not correct anymore so 60 frames per second that is then interpolated four times to become 240 frames per second now 4x with alice fg is actually pretty good i'm not going to lie it's uh it's obviously not going to be as good as what dlss 4 4x fg would be because we don't have access to motion vectors with alice fg you might see some artifacting etc right but it is definitely a lot better than what alice fg 2.1 was in if i if i'm going to move the mouse here you can see that the crosshair has very very little ghosting it's actually impressive previous versions even at 2x had more ghosting than this at 4x now as i said i'm just playing around with this do i recommend you use this mm, maybe not maybe just use it in games that don't have native frame gen support and you do want a higher frame rate because it does have an impact on latency unfortunately i can't measure the latency because i don't have an ldat and the nvidia pc latency in the top right hand corner you can see that it shows zero right so it does not register correctly 
which makes sense. But I do have reflex enabled here, so the input latency is not horrible, but it is definitely noticeable. But I mean, 240 frames per second is nowhere near 500 frames per second, which we had previously. So let's go ahead and uh, see by how much we can actually uh, improve the frame rate. And uh, I know it's interpolating frame rate. It's definitely not increasing your performance. So let's see what we can do here. Right, so seeing that we are stuck with the 60 frames per second base frame rate, I'm going to have to use 10 times, right? So it's still 100% render resolution scale. But now we are going to make 60 frames per second, 600 frames per second. Now I want you to note that there is a performance cost. Just look at our frame rate here. It dropped to 70-ish frames per second. So there's definitely quite a big overhead here. It's not going to take our previous 250 frames per second times that by 10 and we'll get 2,500 frames per second. There's a there's an overhead and as you can see, we are now getting between 60 and 70 frames per second base frame rate without Alice FG. And then in the top left hand corner, you'll see we get 60 base with 600 final. And even 10X doesn't look horrible. It doesn't feel too bad. It's noticeable, more noticeable than 4X. But it does look like the character is lurching a bit when moving forward. It's it, it comes across as a mini stutter. I'm just opening the frame time graph there. And if we look at the frame time graph, it might make sense. You can see that the frame time graph is actually getting a little bit uh, garbled. There's a bit of ghosting, a bit of artifacting just in the way the frames are presented here. But you can see we are getting 600 frames per second. I think... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's so silly, but as I said, I'm just playing around until I get new GPUs and new games are releasing. So I just need to uh, to keep myself busier. But 600 frames per second. Let's just aim the mouse. Um, it's actually doing a very good job here. Even uh, even when there's footage in the background there, like there you can see it does disappear because it it does not really know what uh, what to render. Uh, it's not really UI aware either. So, I mean, that it just makes sense that you'll see issues like that. All right, but then again, 600 frames per second. Let's just open this again. We are getting 70-ish frames per second base here. So I'm going to enable 20X and uh, see. We might not even see uh, an increase in the frame rate because of the additional overheads here. So as you can see, we are getting a base frame rate of 40-ish frames per second now. Mouse, <laughs> mouse movement is delayed by quite a bit. Uh, we are getting 760 frames per second. Let's see what the highest is. Seven, let's see, 800. All right, almost 800. So if we, if we now move around, now you'll see the lurching that I'm talking about. You can see there's a lot of frame skips that I'm pretty sure you'll be able to notice that even in a YouTube video. It, it just looks like the character is lurching for a lot of frame skips. And now if we move the mouse, actually still not terrible with the crosshair. I, um, I have to say I am really impressed here. Now, once again, when there's, it looks like if there's a lot of, um, if there's something in the foreground and something and nothing in the background, I think it, it gets lost there. Sorry if I'm making some of your nauseas. So you can see that it does disappear here when there's, um, I can say, a discrepancy in the depth. Now, over here, there's a lot of foliage as well, but it does not disappear there because it seems like everything is about equally far away from the camera here. All right, so I, I don't know if I'm making any sense whatsoever, but now you can see getting 750 inch frames per second. This is actually best case scenario from my testing so far is Ratchet and Clank. And that's why I wanted to start with it. Once again, just fooling around, not saying anybody should use it. The input latency is noticeable. It, it's playable, I think, uh, except for the lurching. I'm just talking about input latency. Input latency is definitely playable. Lurching is definitely distracting. And GUI ghosting and artifacting is really not that terrible. I think this is actually not terrible at all so we've tested 4x 10x and 20x and i do think that 4x is actually usable all right I, I just need to figure out a way to get past the 60 frames per second base frame rate because 
your the higher your base frame rate the better this will perform actually all right i think that's enough of ratchet and clank let's move over to cyberpunk 2077 all right so here we are cyberpunk 2077 and 1440p on the high preset with the lss set to quality i'm just using the lss to get the frame rate as high as possible and to enforce a bit of a cp bottleneck because frame generation tech does work better when there's a cp bottleneck instead of a gpu bottleneck so let me just show you one thing that you actually have to do and uh you have to run in windowed or windowed borderless. You can't run exclusive full screen because then lossless scaling will not work. All right, so we're getting 170-ish frames per second, right? So nowhere near the 250 frames per second we saw with the Ratchet and Clank. So this might actually be a good use case scenario for lossless scaling so control alt and s and then just have a look at the top left hand corner 60 frames per second becomes 240 frames per second msi afterburner still thinks we're doing 150 160 frames per second uh, so i'm just going to go ahead and close that it's just i want to show you the base frame rates before we start but yeah you can see in cyberpunk there's quite a lot of uh, ghosting and gobbling when it comes to mouse movement okay so but still getting 240-ish frames per second here. But let's just uh, drive around a little bit, see if it actually, uh, what it looks like and feels like. The input latency is pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. Definitely worse than I would have liked from a first-person shooter. Driving actually looks and feels quite okay, getting 240-ish frames per second still. But, I mean, 240 frames per second, maybe not... Uh, <laughs> Uh, not what many people will aim for as I don't think many of you do have 240 hertz panels. Remember you're going to get less of an advantage if you if you do play above your monitor's refresh rate because uh, the only the only advantage you'll basically see is lower input latency but with frame generation you don't get that advantage at all. So the the way I use frame generation is to max out my monitor's refresh rate. I use V-Sync, G-Sync, Reflex and frame generation in combination to cap my frame rate to 158 frames per second on my 165 hertz panel. That gives me the best latency with frame generation enabled and also it prevents me from going over my refresh rate so I get no tearing and motion fluidity is exceptionally smooth but 240 frames per second you're driving around is actually not bad but you can see that the it looks like the the sign there it's got some issues it, it's quite blurry right in movement all right so let's see if we actually want to use this tech the way frame generation is actually supposed to be used right so let's go ahead and enable ray tracing with ray tracing so we just have ray tracing we'll have path tracing enabled as well why not all right so let's see what our base frame rate is in msi afterburner it's around 54 ish frames per second right and we do have our frame rate in the top left hand corner as well base frame rate of 50 and final frame rate of 200 and I don't know definitely a lot more noticeable even on 4x the input latency and also we we got a lot of lurching going on again maybe it's the way he walks I don't know no definitely the the frame pacing I don't know the the frame updates aren't as smooth it does feel like there's some skipping of frames so let's get a, a better vehicle here and let's just see what happens when we drive around a bit i don't want to make this video too long so i'm just going to to drive around here a little bit and see what what the game actually looks like whilst driving and i think it looks okay let's just get a little bit of a further view there so see those driving skills 50 50 frames per second base 200 frames per second final output not uh, not terrible but definitely not how i would play this game right I do I do play this game with path tracing enabled on the 4090 but I do use the LSS quality at 1440p and then I do have a path tracing enabled that gets me uh, above 120 frames per second at all times so definitely playable and the input latency is not too bad over here the frame presentation is really not as smooth as I'd like and this is on 4x right so let's try 10x quickly let's see 
let's actually see how fast we can get Cyberpunk 2077 to run here. We might not get, get it much faster again just because of the overheads, yeah? And see if we, we drop from 50-ish frames per second to 40-ish frames per second, 10x. Uh, still getting 400 frames per second. I mean, that's... <sighs> You have to you have to give it to the developer of this uh, software lossless scaling. I, I think it's extremely impressive for a software application to be able to do this. Uh, maybe maybe it's nothing, right? I don't know anything about software development, but uh, I think it is impressive. Is it usable in every single case? Definitely not. Is it fun to play around with? Definitely. Are there use cases? I'd say for sure, right? Um, 10x and 20x is just not some of them right so 45 ish frames per second here and uh, that gets uh, bumped up to 450 frames per second and uh, lastly i'm just going to do the 20x when i see i mean I'm, I'm not even going to be talking about the ui gobbling and the mouse issues etc but now we are taking 30 ish frames per second let's just see what our base frame rate is so our base frame rate is around 30 Right, so, so we basically halved our base frame rate. We went from around 60 to around 30 frames per second, but then we timed it by 20, multiplied it by 20, and that's why we're getting 600 and something frames per second. So even though it's frame gen times 20, it's not going to take your existing base frame rate and multiply it by 20, right? So there's overhead. So in actual fact, we only went uh, took our base frame rate of 60 frames per second times 10 to get 600 even though we are sitting at times 20 and now you can see the same issues as in ratchet and clank there is uh, there's a lot of frame skipping happening but once again this is really really not as bad as i was expecting i was expecting a lot lot worse especially at 20 and especially some of the other videos i've seen where there's just this halo effect around everything and nothing nothing seems to be working fine but over here it's actually i'm not gonna lie to you it's it's very impressive as i said i personally wouldn't play like this but if I had a 600 hertz monitor, maybe I would have uh, used this just to see how how that actually looks. Because remember, you do get the motion fluidity of 600 frames per second, not the input latency and all that kind of stuff. But input delay is, it's not even just bad, it is erratic. It, it feels, um, it's different each time I move the mouse. It It's delayed, but, you'd expect it to move smooth but it's almost as if mouse acceleration gets enabled and disabled quickly all the time and uh, that's just very distracting so all right i just wanted to play around a bit as i said i want to show you 4x be seeing that mfg is coming out soon with 4x frame generation and then also 10x and 20x play around a little bit with it you can buy it on steam for i think seven dollars as i said it does have its uses but uh 10 and 20x is just not it as you can see the the mouse uh, <laughs> the cursor is definitely troublesome right i think that's going to be the end of this video i hope you guys did enjoy it if you did hit that like button hit the subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one